Hi, Internet viewers. This is Frank Rasher again. Uh, we have the whole bird com textured now completely. I've done the underneath side of the chin like so, so that you could see it well. And then the head as well. And we burnt deep on the leading edges here where that center point was on the line so that we can get some air through there, it looks like, and it'll make it look more realistic. So uh, we have the bird complete. Now, what I'm going to show you today is we're going to do the eyes, and I'm going to show you exactly how I install the eyes. We're going to use a glass eye, which is what I use pre uh, predominantly in all my carvings, okay? It gives you a real good realistic look so bear with me i will move the camera down and we will install the eyes thank you okay internet viewers we're back again i'm going to show you how to do the eyes uh i wanted to verify the locations we had a measurement from the tip of the beak in it was seven eighths, and then also we had a dimension of five sixteenths up from that beak line up to that. So, what I've done is I've checked it out in the distance from the beak to the center of the eye was, and this is looking straight down at it in profile, is seven eighths. And I checked both sides, and that's exactly what we have. Then what I want to do is I'm going to use my uh, ram grinder here, uh, the micro grinder, and I'm using a four millimeter, it's a ruby ball, but in its former day, it had grit on it. Now it's just basically metal. And I'm going to use it as a burnisher to go in to make the holes larger. The I on on the cardinal is uh, five millimeter, and the hole we drew had pushed in with this was four. So I go in and I basically burn this out right in here, and I do the same thing on the other side. I go in and I widen it and go around and I get it so that the ball is really in there. And now I have it to the depth I want. The other thing you need to do is I use glass eyes and the glass eyes are like this. This is a five millimeter glass eye, it's brown and that's what the uh, Cardinal's eye is. And uh, these do not come with wire in the back. They used to make them that way, but no more. So uh, that's fine too. So I uh, get the glass eye and I do this. Uh, I'm going to use quick wood, which is uh, a wood I use. Uh, you, you need it. It's an epoxy putty. Let me show you. I'm going to just take a little bit off of this. This is, all you do is just slice this off. It's a whole roll. And uh, it it's excellent in case you take out too much wood. You can use the quick wood to fill in uh, anything you may have taken out. Uh, the only problem is you got to watch when you're burning it. If you need to go into a burned area, the temperature ranges. This actually melts. Uh, when you're running uh, the, the wood burner through. So you only want to use this in areas where you don't need to, but you can texture it. You can also stone it too, you know, and stuff like that. It's very good. But it replaces wood where you take a lot out that you may have made a mistake. So uh, excellent product, and I use this also for setting the eyes. The, it, the epoxy putty is actually uh, a two-part. It, it comes in a roll where you have the outside and the inside uh, with two different epoxies. And 
what I do is I wet my finger to just uh, get it softened a little bit more. It's pretty soft to start. But what I do is I get this and I blend the two together so it comes up with one color. Then what I do is I take about a, a BB size piece of this epoxy and you have to work with it reasonably fast. It, it sets up in about 15 minutes, but you should have plenty of time. So I'm gonna push that into the hole and you can see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Even before I do that, just to make sure that the eye is going to fit in there. When you're drilling in that hole, you want to get the the eye so it fits on the back side, so that the domed area goes into the eye itself. And there's a slight recess, so once the eye is just below the surface a little bit, then you know you got the right uh, diameter and the right depth. So. Uh, that is done for both sides, okay? And then I, I pushed the epoxy in like this. And what I do is I get the glass eye and I put this with the dome side out. And I push that in and I get a pencil with the eraser and I push in. And of course, I didn't get enough epoxy behind there. So let me do this. I'm gonna go in and pop that out for a second. Just realized that afterwards. Get a little more of the epoxy, put that in like so, so it's flush with the surface. And I get the eye again. Lay this right in there. I get the pencil eraser to do the pushing and I push it in. And then you'll see this ooze out of the epoxy. And that's what I want and I want that oozed out all the way around. Now, I get a, not a real, real sharp point, but a pretty sharp point on the pencil. And I go around just like so. Take the excess off. Make sure you clean it all up. And it leaves like a little bit of a membrane all around the glass eye. And your eye is done. Now the trick is, is to make sure you have it to the right depth. You want to get it out. I'm going to try to show you this. I'm going to push a little harder. So I have the eye in a little more. I'm going to come around lightly just to take the excess off again. And if I could give you the side view here, it, it sticks out, oh, about not quite, it's more than a 16th and yeah, it's, a, it's about a 16th, maybe a little bit more than a 16th when you got from the surface out to the top of the dome of the glass eye. So uh, hopefully uh, you got you can achieve that because you don't want this to look bug-eyed. So I'm going to get this epoxy here, plug it in the hole. I hope I have enough. I'm going to get the other glass eye, and I'm going to plug that in. And if you ever need any of these glass eyes or anything, I have them available for you if you need them or the blank or the pattern, whatever you may need to accomplish the project. So I'm gonna push that in. You can see the, it 
pops out. So this is a, a fairly simple way of setting the eye, but you wanna make sure that the eye is in straight, you know, going straight back and not on a skew or something like that because the bird's eyes are basically flattened right in. You have the dome portion up here. And the one thing you don't want to get all over the place is, is the, uh, the putty. So I'm going to go around, check it. This I think needs to go in just a little bit more. So I'll push that in a little bit more. You can see the, the putty came out. here and get the excess off we basically got the eye where we should should have it so there is I'm just looking on this side here yeah that's good the, the putty will fill in if you happen to get a little larger opening than you need. And also, uh, you can go around, and you don't wanna dig in with the pencil. You're just going around the glass, just trying to clean it up and get the excess out of there. And, and that'll leave like a membrane around the eye, which is what you're trying to achieve. The other thing I need you to do too also is to come in and make sure that your beak is sanded. I'm gonna to try to uh, show you how to finish the beak too, because we're getting really close to uh, prepping this for painting. So I sanded this all out by hand and after it's all done, and that's the look I'm looking for. The other thing I did too, I burned, it's probably about an eighth of an inch in profile coming down, down from the top here. I burned in like a wedge, which makes it look like the hairs are coming onto this beak. And the reason why I did that is this is the nostril of the bird and it comes right in here so what i do is i put it on a pencil then i come back with the burning unit like so and i burn that in onto the beak and that'll uh, actually create what i can call the nostril in there that does the job now the the last step and i hope this is working if not, we'll find out shortly here. Uh, of course not. Let's see if this one's working. I use uh, the super glue, which is right now not working for me because I need to get another tube out. There we go. I'm going to get this super glue tube. And I'll show you what I do here. I just uh, poke a hole in here. Then I get the top. Screw this on. Now, most of this I like is the super glue that you can get from a dollar store or something like that because uh, this is real watery and I uh, uh, want you to uh, have that because what we're going to do is we're going to saturate uh, the beak and it, it'll soak into the into the beak and give and when it dries it'll be like a bony look and let me show you how this goes you want to stay in control when you are letting that out see when it really comes out fast use uh, the tip of your super glue holder in there and then just let a little bit out at a time so it's not flowing like crazy 
you want to coat the whole beak. If you get too much, you want to angle this way so it drips off down here, not going back into your piece, because you don't want super glue all over the place. You really don't. So always just aim the beak down if you have to, to uh, keep control of it. Now I'm co coating the whole beak and I'm not loading it up. Um, I'm just spreading it out. Okay. So that looks pretty good right there. So what I'm going to ask you to do is then let that dry. And then after you're done, I want you to sand the beak to get the gloss off of there. There is a, a, a gloss that occurs if it, if you have too much super glue on, it will uh, put a glaze on there and you want to get the glaze off. So you would go back and do hand sanding, but you can't do it right away. You got to let that sit for a little bit. So I will capture that later. But we now have the whole thing as far as the eyes in, the beak is ready or will be as soon as that dries. And then... Uh, the one thing I need you to do after all this is done and you sand it this beak, I want you to come in with a rotary uh, brush or even a toothbrush if you have it and brush it all out to get the dust off. And then I will start the painting and I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so for this section where you've done the eye, the beak, and uh, we're prepping for uh, painting. So uh, hope you got something out of this and uh, I will uh, wish you would uh, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you would subscribe to my channel, uh, again, I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you on the next video and we will be starting a painting. So, uh, Thanks a lot.